Hi everyone! Welcome to another Ashtown Creations YouTube tutorial. My name is Stephanie and today we are making the Driftwood Handbag by Needle and Anchor Patterns. I have to say this is a great bag. I have made two of them so far and I can see me making many more. This is the bag that we are making in the tutorial today. It is a good size bag. It's great size, carry lots of things in it, probably more than we really need to carry, but anyways, so inside, lots of room. It has a zippered pocket with a nice overlay or zipper trim. And on the other side is a slip pocket that goes the whole way across. It closes, this bag closes with dual, with dual zippers. So one, two, and it has lots of extra zipper tape for it to open wide so you can get into the bag. The uh, handles, this is, there's two versions. There's the handled version, which is the main version. And it has the two handles and four connectors. The connectors are hidden connectors. So um, nice, clean way to do them with facings. The other version will be the supplement. It's a crossbody supplement. So you will only do two hidden connectors, one on this side and one on this side or vice versa, but opposite, and then create one crossbody strap that goes all the way over. I have, with this bag, I decided to make an optional crossbody strap so I can connect, connect it to one of the connectors on one side and then on the other side. So now I have a crossbody strap as well as the handles. I, looking at this bag, I think the sides are my favorite part. They have the nice um, double stitching here, double stitching all the way around this accent piece, pleated accent piece. I think it looks great and very classy, even with funky colors. So for this bag, I used some green ostrich uh, faux leather and orange faux leather, both of them from um, Bodio Fabrics. Um, the lining fabric in this one is Ottertex waterproof canvas. And uh, I got that from FWD Fabrics. The yellow floral is from, let me check, quilting cotton from Moda Fabrics called Last Bloom. I can't remember where I got it from. The zipper tape and zipper pulls um, are from Zipper Valley. I believe the chunky zipper ends are from uh, Lauren Mormino at So Whatever. And the rectangle rings and um, rivets are from my website. Um, since this is a long, this is a long video, it's a pretty involved bag. Um, I'll be linking the uh, links to the timestamps in the description box below. Um, uh, so you can just jump to that section if you want. And uh, if you could like and subscribe, that would be great. Um, please leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. I'll do my best to respond as soon as I possibly can. And I also want to thank Carissa from Needle and Anchor Patterns for allowing me to uh, record this tutorial for you. All right, let's get sewing. All right. Let's go through the pieces. For the crossbody strap, I have the main, all this is faux leather. I have the main color and the contrast piece. Uh, contrast piece is considerably shorter than the main. And bag handles, I have two in the main color and two in the contrast. All of this is faux leather. For the zipper panel, I have two of the main faux leather exterior and two um, co uh, quilting cotton lining um, backed with a woven interface. I have the bag handle connectors, um, four bag handle connectors. I've already put in the Decaville light and I've um, got my strip of tape already. Um, hidden connectors. So there's hidden connectors on this bag and we'll be using facing. So I've got four pieces out of quilting cotton and I've actually this time backed it with um, a woven interfacing. So four of those. My exterior panels, I've got two and they're four and two are mirrored, 
Make sure you mirror your um, exterior panels. Mine are all done in faux leather and I've got them backed with my Decaville light already. I will eventually cut out the spots for the uh, hidden connectors. For the sides of the bags, the side contrast, I have two side contrast pieces. Both are in orange faux leather. And we'll be using a uh, contrast facing around the opening for the contrast side pieces. And I have used uh, quilting cotton that I have put a, straight, a spray starch on so that it's a little thicker and will turn a little easier, stitch a little easier. The bag base, faux leather, green faux leather. I've already fused my Decaville heavy and I've also punched my holes. I'll be riveting um, purse feet on this. The lining piece, I'm using um, Ottertex waterproof canvas, so I have two of those. On the inside, we've got zipper pocket. There's two parts to the zipper pocket, the top part, and then the bottom, which will fold up to close in the pocket. Both are um, lined or yeah, interfaced with woven interfacing. And for the, there's a trim, an overlay trim accent piece to go around the zipper um, on the lining. Also have a slip pocket. So the slip pocket has a contrast piece. This one will actually be the exterior and there'll be a little bit of this poking through at the top as a nice contrast. Um, the, the faux leather doesn't have any interfacing, but the quilting cotton does. Again, it's, an, it's a woven interfacing. So for zippers, one main zipper. We have one main zipper and one in, internal zipper. With those zippers, there's three, um, one for the inside, and then the zipper closure on the ex outside, the exterior, has two zipper folds. Uh, I will be using um, riveted bag feet, so I have my six of those here. Um, I have some zipper ends to put on the zipper, the external zipper. I have my bag label. We'll also be using four square rings for the um, handles. And I will also be making a crossbody strap. I need to get the slider, forgot to grab that. But I have two one inch swivel hooks for the um, crossbody strap. And then I also need some rivets. These are large, but I will be using a combination depending on the um, thickness, depending on the thickness of the strap that we're riveting. All right, let's get started with this bag. All right, we're gonna start by prepping some of the bag components. The first thing up are gonna be the side contrast pieces. Side contrast pieces have a pleat. So we're gonna have like the center line and these are the fold lines. What we want, hopefully you can see this, is to bring this line into the center. See, match those two up and then fold it back so that the, this fold matches that line. Do the same thing on the other side. So we wanna bring that into the center, match those up and then fold it back. So then we have the fold like that. I need to grab, grab some clips and clip it. There we go. One, actually I'm actually going to put two clips in it, one on either side. So two clips, do the same on the other. So we're going to take this and fold it to the center like that, and then fold it back. Same thing on the other side. Fold this mark to meet the center mark and then back. And clip it. Now we're going to take these pieces and top stitch and stitch them, eh, baste them basically across the top. We're going to baste these across the top. 
So I've got mine set at a three and a half inch, um, or three and a half stitch length. Actually, we want that one in. So then we're just going to top stitch or baste stitch right across the top. I'm going to use my uh, tweezers to help keep things in line. And do the second one. We want to make sure that our um, basting stitches stay in the seam allowance so we can't see them later. And there we go. Pleats are done in the contrast side panels. We can set these aside for now. Next up, we have the uh, bag handle connectors. I So there's four of these. I've already interfaced mine with the Decaville light. So you wanna have a line down the center, put your strip of Decaville light in, and then I've put another piece of uh, double-sided tape so that it will hold it when I fold it to the center. So I'm gonna remove the tape, and then I'm going to um, fold these edges, fold the long edges into the line as evenly as possible. And then I'll fold the other side, other long side in to match them, trying to get it as close as possible so you can hide the seam. And do that for the other three. And now we want to top stitch the bag handle connectors. We're going to do a double row of top stitching. So I'm going to start in and do um, a one quarter inch um, tops in at a quarter inch all the way around. And then I'm going to do at the eighth of an inch for all four connectors. So starting off with the, and I'm going to change stitch them, starting off with the uh, one quarter inch. And I'm changing my stitch length to a five. Back stitch. And then I'm going to chain stitch these. It takes less thread and is a little bit faster. So I am using Tex 70 thread from Pecana in uh, Calgary, Alberta. And I'm using a size 19 needle on my Texo 2750 Pro cylinder arm machine. And now at the eighth of an inch seam allowance. And there, our straps are all done. 
we can set these aside. Now we're going to work on the bag base. So as I mentioned in, in my description of pieces, I've already fused my Decaville Heavy onto the back of my bag base. I've already punched the holes in it for the bag feet. So now I need to stitch around the Decaville Heavy. And I also need to make sure that I have marked in the corners, let me find a pen, that I have marked in the corners this I have it already marked, but I'll make it a little bit darker. This, this half an inch corner. So on all four corners, we're going to mark this little square half inch by half inch. So I'll just go make them all a little bit darker. And the last one. All right. And so now I'm going to stitch around the, the bottom of the bag or the bottom of the base um, a quarter of an inch in from this um the edge of the decaville heavy and i'm going to use a longer stitch length so i'm going to use my top stitching stitch length and i'm only going to back stitch once so it will lock it in but it's not a huge amount of back stitching all in one spot so here we go Stitch over my stitches and then back up. It was only supposed to be once. There, that should have locked the stitches in. All right. Singe my threads to make sure it doesn't come loose. Should be okay. And now we want to put in the bag feet. So I'm going to be adding purse feet to the bottom of my bag and I'm using the I'm using uh, bag feet that you rivet on. So I'm going to start in the back because I've already got my holes marked. I followed the um, markings on the pattern piece. So I'm going to put, I have the post. So I'm going to put the post in behind and then I'm going to click the foot into place. Oops. Change out my dies so that I can actually rivet the purse feet on. All right. So I've got the post in and the purse foot on the on the front. I stick it in my press and just like riveting other things, I rivet it on. So I will go ahead and then I check it to make sure it's not loose. So I will go ahead and do the other five and then we'll move on. Right, and there we go, purse feet added. All right, time to move on to the uh, bag handles. So we've got two different pieces, the main and then the contrast. And the contrast is shorter by design than, than the exterior. So what we want to do, we want to match the short ends, and then we're going to stitch across each of the short ends at 3 8 of an inch. And then we'll turn it, and I've already put tape down the center. So we'll turn it right side out, and then we'll fold each of the long sides into the center. So for now, go ahead and stitch it at three eighths. I will do all of them and then we'll be back. So I'm on a three and a half stitch length. And just to note, I kept the double-sided tape out of my stitch area um, because you don't wanna be stitching. My machine doesn't like stitching through the double-sided tape, so.
All right, now we wanna turn these right side out and start folding in towards the center line. All right, so with the handles, we want to, we're gonna end up turning them right side out, but we want to make sure that we've opened these seams. So I'm gonna start removing some of the tape. So hopefully this will hold some of the seams open. And I'm actually going to take a bit more of my double-sided tape so I can put it across this part here. And I take that off. And I'm gonna, I want to fold this into the center line. To reduce the bulk a bit, I'm going to cut down the, um, just cut on an angle here. So cut out some of this extra fabric so it doesn't stick out so it doesn't stick out the sides. All right, so I wanna fold it in to the line. There we go, and match them up nicely. And then I'm gonna stick a clip on both sides to hold it. And then continue going on down along, matching up the long edge with the line on the straps. And with something round like this, I don't take the tape, I don't take the paper all off the tape at the same time. I do a little bit at a time so that it doesn't go get stuck to everything. Because this, this is uh, leather tape and it is very, very sticky stuff. sides open, grabbing another little piece of double-sided tape, sticking it across here. And then folding to the center. Just make sure these stay. I'm going to put clips again. And it doesn't matter because these two pieces will end up going together like this. So it doesn't really matter how neat and tidy the seam is in here. The only thing that it does seem to um, matter if you don't have it real, real tidy, um, it can make your straps all wonky. So, you know, if you have it so that it's like big gap here and a big gap here and the strap is getting bigger and smaller all the way along, it, it doesn't look great. So try and be as neat and, and tidy as possible when you're doing this. Even though you won't be able to see the seam, it, you might be able to see any gaps in the size of your, um, in the width of the strap. All right, now onto the other side. one done. Go ahead and do the same with the other strap.
right now we want to take the straps and fold them back on one another so there will be um, because the outside is longer than the inside there will be an overlap like right here so the it will wrap around so it has a nice finish on it and so we want to make sure that we've got the same almost the same or as close to the same wrap around as on one side as we do on the other so going to so this one can come up a little bit more just clip it there and then see that's approximately the same may not finish off as the same because my walking foot still will push it along if one is stretchier than the other it may not but now do that to the other one and then we're going to go through and stitch it all the way around we're going to do it twice the first time at a quarter of an inch seam allowance in and the second time at an eighth of an inch seam allowance so let's get stitching all right now we're going to stitch around the um bag handles as i mentioned before we're going to start with a quarter inch seam allowance so we're going to do two sets of stitching so a quarter inch seam allowance and then one eighth inch seam allowance all the way around both straps so i'm going to set my stitch length to a five and start sewing I'm going to go forward one, back one to lock it in. Actually going to put a few clips in just to make sure it stays together. now I'll go around it so that's at a quarter of an inch now I'll go around it an eighth of an inch There we go. And the threads, I'm going to singe the ends just to try and make sure that they don't come through. And there we have one strap. So go ahead and do the same with the other strap and then we'll move on.
All right, now we're going to prepare the uh, zipper tape and the zipper panel. So I'm using continuous zipper tape, zipper by the yard. This is number five bag zipper. I've already gone ahead and marked the center of my zipper. So this bag will have overhang on both sides of the bag. So it's longer than we definitely need to, for the panel part, but we want that extra for the overhang. So I'm going to take, so I have the exterior and I have the lining. So I'm going to take one of the exteriors and put it right sides together with the zipper tape. And if you notice on here, we have one inch marks on either side. We don't want to stitch this. This is going to be folded back later to make sure that the ends of the zipper panel um, match. So we're going to be stitching. We're going to match these up, both of them, put um, clip them together and then we're going to stitch between these lines. We're not going to stitch over them. So start by matching right sides together with the exterior and I'm going to clip it in place. Again, avoiding that section. Now I'm going to flip it over and match up my lining fabric with the center. And then include the lining in with these clips. So the, the um, one inch marks are on both sides. So when we're finished, we will fold these back so that they match. So we don't, we're gonna stitch from here down to the other side that, or down to the other end And I'm going to be doing it at a scant. Yeah, I'm going to do it on this side. Uh, no, I'm going to do it on this side. I'm going to be doing it at a scant uh, quarter inch because with my um, presser foot, I can't get quite that far over. So put this up and then I'm going to stitch it all the way. Nope, as I said between these lines. So I'm going to bring my needle down right at the line. Put it right down at the line. And then I'm going to hold my thread stitch forward. Actually, I'm going to switch it back to a three and a half stitch length back and now continue along this side. So, and when you're when you're sewing, if your stitch, if your um, top fabric happens to bunch up and shift down a bit, you may have to move this line back a bit. Um, we'll see. So far, so good for mine. So then I'm going to get come to this line here. One more, close enough, and then I'm going to back stitch. it out, trim off my tails, and I'm going to fold this back, fold this back on itself. For now, I'm just doing this so can we can so I can clip it out of the way so I can do the other side. So I'm gonna fold this back and finger press and then fold this one back. So I'll just leave it out for now. Fold this back and match up these sides, the long side, the long edge. out of the way. So we're going to work on the other side. So I've marked, doesn't matter which side, I've marked both sides. So I'm going to 
match up the centers of the other side of the zipper panel and pin those and basically do exactly the same as we did for the other side. So flip it along the long edge, bring the lining piece up and include it in the clips. Matching the line, matching the seams, matching the edges. And again, stitching from that line to the other line, not any further. Bring my needle down right on the line. trim it off. All right now we want to work with these sides. So I'm going to get a little bit of um, double-sided tape and put some, uh, move it in a bit because I don't want it I want to keep it as much as possible out of my seams. My machine doesn't really like it. We'll go over a bit, but it doesn't like a lot of it. So. Right. so on this side, I'm going to take the tape off. And I'm going to fold it back at that line. So fold it back this way. Now this side, I'm going to do the same thing. And fold, start by folding it back at the line. And we wanna make sure that when we bring it, these right sides together, so I've got it folded too much. So when we bring the right sides together that they're only folded they're folded the same amount so that they meet up nicely. So they meet up nicely on this side. I think I've got it folded in a little much because it's kind of going on an angle. Start with that and put a clip in it. Can always adjust it later, and then we'll clip down the sides. Trying to keep the long edges together. this side. I'm going to start with the cotton this time, folding it back. Now the faux leather. All right, and now together. That one worked a little better than the other. Still not completely even. Move that up a bit. That's better. Right. 
there we go that's one side do exactly the same thing for the other side and then we will we will stitch it The other thing we want is for these ones to match up as closely as possible too. So I'm going to move the line back a bit. So there, see that's pretty good. Take this off and try and do the same. Yep, so there we go. So those are pretty well lined up. Bring these together. down the long side. Right. right now we want to top stitch around, top stitch down along the zipper and the ends and then baste along the other side. So I'm setting my stitch length to a five and I will start over on this side. And do stitch. And we're top stitching at an eighth of an inch, if I forgot to say that. I think I did. So top stitch down these sides and base down the outside. Singe the ends of the thread and then do it on the other side. <clears throat> Oops. Again, we're top stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm going to trim up a little of the excess along the edge that's sticking out that might interfere with lining things up later. All right. Now I'm going to, even though I have my centers marked, they were marked before we did the folds. So what I want to do now, because we're going to need the centers later, is I'm going to find the centers again. So that one's not too bad. I'm just going to snip it just to make sure. Make sure you snip within the seam allowance so that you don't uh, you don't have a big huge hole in your stitching. So I'm going to snip that one too. So they were pretty close. And I actually have to mark it with a mark a pen. Because this one's not quite the same as it was. So that's this there and there. All right. Because we had to fold them in on the sides and we had to adjust to make sure that they were even, it can change the center of the panel. So in the pattern, um, it, it says, so yeah, our finished length of the zipper should be 11 and a half, and I have 11 and a half. It also says that we can now attach our hardware and do the ends. Go ahead and do that if you want. I will be keeping mine apart. I find it easier to work 
as long as possible without my zipper, my zipper sliders in the way. Okay, it's time for the exterior sides. Um, so grab your exterior panels. You want one and a mirrored one. We're gonna match them up along these edges. You might notice um, that my piece is slightly different than yours. Yours in here will have more of a curve. I cut these out before the pattern was changed. So mine is a little more of a, of a corner I have that on my lining piece as well. Just ignore that and you're going to, when you get to that part, you'll sew the curve where I have the corner. So, but it is the same piece. So we're gonna match them up and I'm gonna put clips in a few different spots, not just this um, side piece. Just wanna keep everything all lined up. So I'm gonna put a few clips in. Then I'm going to sew just this side at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So back down to three and a half stitch length. Needle down, back stitch. And then do the same for the other side. So matching up the side pieces or the little side pieces keep things all lined up all the way around and now we're going to stitch this at three eighths of an inch clips off. Now we're going to open up the side pieces and spread. See, I'm butterflying the seam. Now we're going to stitch, top stitch, down either side of the center seam. So moving mine to a top stitch length of five. Get it under and make sure the seams stay out flat. The other side, making sure it's lying flat. And now we'll do the same for the other side piece. side. So I'm going to trim off all of the tails so they're not in the way. And now we're going to be adding the side contrast facing. going to put this in here for a minute while I work with them. So the side contrast facings, I have done, I have put a little bit of spray starch on them so that they are um, a little more stiff than just regular quilting cotton, but it's not, they're not, they're still quite flimsy. Um, you don't want a lot of bulk in the seams, but this helps clean up the edges 
So facings go on and then fold to the back and they help clean up the edges just a bit for, um, for the seam without creating a lot of bulk. So I am going to put, so I've, oops, snipped my center and I am going to put the center, not in pin it in place quite yet, center up there and then down here I'm matching up the edges, the bottom edges, and I'm going to smooth it out and clip it all the way along. And then start at the other end and clip it and clip it around, meeting up in the center. So then we can adjust where the center falls on this. Okay, turn it around. Now we're going to stitch it at 3 8 seam allowance. If you're unsure about doing a, a 3 8 seam allowance, you can go in with a um, marking pen. This is a dry erase, air erasing sew line pen. So you can go in, let's put that under here, and go around and mark, you know, go around the corner and mark, you know, 3 8 three eighths all the way around if you're concerned about keeping your um three eighths seam allowance around a curve i'm not going to mark it all i'm just going to try my best and wing it but you can go around measuring with your ruler this on the three inch mark at the edge and then go around and do little dashes all the way around and that will give you a good idea of where three three eighths where your seam allowance is I have a little mark that I put in a uh, Sharpie pen on my um, bobbin cover plate. Just take it nice and slow. There's no rush. And uninterfaced cotton does have a tendency to stretch, so it won't be necessarily 100%. Even if you interfaced it, it may still stretch. Um, but just work with it the best you can, and we'll be able to trim off anything that doesn't fit. Trim off the threads. Go ahead and do the same thing for the other side and then we'll carry on. All right, continuing on with the side contrast facing. I'll just grab one of these. We're going to trim up this. I'm going to use my pinking shears and I'm going to trim um, down to about an eighth of an inch left on here. Go ahead and trim around. Curves usually sit better when they have snips or have been cut with pinking shears because this really does create a space for the fabric when it's um, going around a, a curve. Turn, curve. You don't want to snip your stitches though so make sure you don't like I almost did. Thank you. 
There's one. Do this for both pieces. All right, now we want to, this, this facing needs to go turned around to the other side. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to turn and bring it back to the back side. So I want to bring this all around to this back side. Trying to make a nice clean edge as I do it. I'm going to start by pinning it and eventually I'll probably add some double-sided tape. So you can use a lot of double-sided tape or a little bit. Um, I don't know if glue would work or not. The facing's a little thin and the glue might seep out. So anyways, you want to bring it all back to the back and make sure you've got this corner down here pushed out. It might actually be better if you, the further back you can get the facing towards the back, the cleaner the front edge will be. If you happen to have a little bit peeking through or you want to make it look like it's like you've got a quite a bit peeking out, you want to make it look like it's faux piping, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to try my best to get it as far back as I can so that it's not peeking out. And if you're just doing all quilting cotton, you could probably go iron this. I'm um, using vinyl, so I really, and this vinyl um, gets soft very easily when, when you put it under heat. As so I found when I was adhering my Decaville light. So keep going all the way around. Don't forget this little corner down here. Actually, the pattern says if you want, you can go ahead before you start pulling it to the back. And if you want to put double-sided tape all the way along, it's easier to do it when it's like this before you start turning it. I'm only going to put it in spots where I feel it needs to, so I don't, I'm not going to cover the whole thing in double-sided tape. But if you are planning on doing that, have, doing it before you start turning it to the wrong side is the easiest. So now I'm going to go through and in a few spots, I'm going to use my double-sided tape, trying to keep it as far away from my stitch lines as possible. So. And then pull it taut and stick it down and that'll help keep it to the back. And go around and do it for all of the places that you think it needs it. And then we'll move on to the other one. And then we'll move on to sewing.
All right, now we're gonna take it to the machine and we're going to stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around for both. So that's a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, let's sew up these uh, side contrast facings. So again, we're going to be stitching around at one quarter of an inch seam allowance. And it's a top stitching length. So I'm gonna put it up to a, a five for me. So there we go. The facing is now stitched and on both sides it's stitched down. So repeat for the other side and then we'll install the contrast side pieces. All right, it's time to add the contrast side pieces to the sides of the bag. So taking one of the pieces, I'm gonna flip it over that side and I'm, go I'm going to pinch these together a little more so that they, they stay a little more pleated in the bag. So I'm going to just for now pin these. Eventually the, the, or clip these, the clips will come out. So I'm going to flip it over and I want to match up these side seams with the bottom of the um, contrast piece and I'm going to clip those. And now the center top, I'm going to add, crease a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of, of double-sided tape. There is a lot of double-sided tape in this pattern. So I'm gonna put a little bit of double-sided tape. Um, okay, at the top of this. Peel it off. Peel it off and then I'm going to stick stick this piece down trying to line up the center of the pleat with the center seam on in between the two front panels or two panels so and then the rest of it should just fall down into place I'm gonna flip it over just to look yep it looks like the pleats coming out of the center so put this back I'm gonna add some more double-sided tape around just to hold it in place while we top stitch. So. You don't wanna pull on anything because pulling on it can make it go wonky. There we go, that's all stuck down. I'm gonna put a little bit at the bottoms here just to hold these pieces in. There, one on the other side. All right, do the same, do the same for the other, other piece. And then we'll take it to the machine and top, take it to the machine and top stitch it. Okay, now we're gonna be, we've got the center, con or we got the side contrast panels in. Now we're gonna be top stitching at a 1 8 inch seam allowance to sew that uh, contrast piece in place. 
and I'm using a top stitch length of five to match the other one that we already have there. Got quite the lump of uh, fabric, so I'm going to use some stuff that came with my machine, kind of like a hump jumper. So if you have a hump jumper, go ahead and use it. If not, um, use some scrap that you have to help you get up and over the lump, the big thick seams. These will be quite visible, so we want to make sure we've got good, nice good top stitching. Great. That's one side done. Go ahead and do the other side. And there's the second one. So on the back side of this, there is a lot of extra fabric around the um, contrast piece. You can trim it off if you want, but if you leave it, it gives it a little extra structure. So I'm planning on leaving it on mine. All right, we're moving on to the um, add the hidden connector facings. Um, so on the exterior panels, you need to mark where your hidden strap connectors are going to go. The pattern piece for this has two, um, two holes. The first one is it, the furthest, so the furthest one away, this will be the center of the bag. The furthest one away is for O-rings. Um, O-rings can, you know, you can have straps coming out of straight up off the side but with rec this one's for rectangle rings or anything that's kind of flat they it's harder for them to go on an angle have the strap coming on an angle it pulls them weird so they look weird but it also puts stress on the uh, connector that doesn't need to be there so since i'm doing the rectangle rings this is the the hole that i have marked um the placement that i have marked on all my on all my pieces so I'm going to, what we need to do now is, I'm going to turn this, is line up, these are the facings. So we need to line up this square or this rectangle with this rectangle. Then we're going to stitch it down, cut it through, switch, um, move it to the, or flip it to the back. What I'm going to do um, first, see if this will work, had them off a little bit on my first attempt. So I'm going to try this one. It's a little big. What I'm going to do is put some tape in the center here because that's where I want it centered. Then I'm going to take the tape off and try and center this rectangle face right sides together. So this will be face down. This is face up. So try and center that so I have the I have the rectangle marked on the front so we can mark match it and the back of the um, facing pieces so now that that's on there I'm going to stitch around this box um, just as I check in the pattern I want to stitch around the box with a slightly longer stitch length um, at in the pattern it says, uh, yes, a longer stitch length, so it's easier to manipulate after sewing. So I'm going to be leaving it on my top stitching length. And I'm going to sew around that box. It probably make the box quite, feel quite small. Won't get many stitches in, but it'll be enough to hold it and hopefully enough to turn it. So I'm going to forward 
and then try and get it right down on the line. Yep, got it. Turn, come down this line. And I want to put it right on the corner. Turn. And I'm right in the corner. So come back the other way. haven't cut out, I'm going to have to cut out some of this um, Decaville light because you're supposed to cut out that. But I found on my first attempt that I cut out the box and then when I sewed it on it was slightly off and I ended up having to cut the Decaville light out anyways. So I'm just going to hit pause for a minute and get my exacto. All right, have my exacto knife. So I'm going to lightly cut around here, just through the first Decaville light layer. I'm not cutting through all the way right now. I'm just trying to cut some of this Decaville light back. Because we don't really want, and we don't want to cut the stitches either. We don't really want it in there. It's extra bulk that doesn't need to be there when we're turning through these connectors. Good enough. So now on the other side here, get my mat so I can. So now we want to, like we do with with uh, zipper pockets, putting in zipper pockets. We're going to cut in the center, and then we're going to put do a Y. Like we're going to triangle out the corners, cut in on an angle. It's not the half inch; it's just approximate. Find a good length that seems to work. Don't cut your stitches, but cut in from the corners. All right, I think I got that. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my scissors and try to trim down some of this extra excess because it just gets in the way again of the facing going through properly. So I'm just I'm just bending it to get the piece that I want to cut sticking straight up and cut it back without cutting my stitches. So I'm just cutting a hole right in it. There we go. I suppose I could have just cut out. Yeah, could have just cut through and cut the hole with my exacto knife. But anyways, this is sort of following the pattern. And so now I'm going to, I'm going to finger press this, but if I need to, I might have to take it to the iron. So I'm gonna finger press this all the way around to, to crease, to try and make it help sit flatter when I push it through. So now I'm going to push this facing through to the other side. Come on. All right. And then Pull it back, kind of like we did on the side facings. We want to try and get it back as far as we can. We don't really want it peeking through. Finger press. And now I'm going to take some more double-sided tape. And I'm going to put some on all around all of the edges to pull it through and pull it tight. One, pull it through as tight as we can. 
This is working with this double-sided leather tape. I'm not sure if wash away wonder tape would be strong enough to hold when pulling all this back. Because it needs to be quite strong to hold this taut. And we're trying and we I'm putting it right at the edge, so I'm keeping it out of my seam allowance. Do not want to stitch through this. Pull that side. And just careful you don't pucker the front. Yeah, mine's puckering a bit. Might be a little tight. Do this so that's the back the back looks like and the front looks like that clean up my threads and this is where we're going to put the um, these will be where our hidden connectors go so go ahead and do that to all of all four of the hidden strap connector spots and then we'll come back and insert the, hidden, the strap connectors. All right, so I was adding a hidden connector off camera and I messed it up. So I thought I would pop back in and um, explain a little bit what I did and how to, how I've gone ahead to fix it. Um, so when I was putting the connector, the facing on, and cutting it through, I was trying to cut through from the back all of the layers. And while it might have worked, I ended up cutting my stitches. So I had to go back and cut another facing piece and interface it. And then what I did, and when I look at the pattern, this is actually what the pattern says to do. I stuck the um, facing piece down, put some tape on it, came to the back, and stitched it around on the back. So when you're putting your, when you're doing your marks and cutting out the uh, rectangle for whether you want O-rings or rectangle rings, doesn't matter, same thing. Try to um, evenly um, match the facing up on your right sides together. Stitch around the box on the wrong side. Um, so then you're you're not trying to stitch around the box on this side, stitch around the box on the back side. Then you will get the right size around the right hole and it should work better. So just use a little bit of tape. I've just used scotch tape. You can use painter's tape, whatever, washi tape. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to get pop back on and say what I've done and how I've gone ahead to try and fix it. Fingers crossed that it works out. Now I'm going to work on the others to get them finished. Okay, it's time to add the um, hidden bag handle connectors. So what we need, we need our exterior piece with the holes all finished, the hidden connector holes all finished nicely. We need one of our um, bag handle connector handles. And what we're gonna do with this is where the seam is. So with this seam side up, we're going to put it in this hole and pull it in. And I like to pull it in. The instructions say about halfway through. I like to leave about, what is that? Half to three eighths of an inch at the top. We want to make sure that this looks like it's fairly centered. You can grab a, a ruler to see if that's about centered. Yeah. We, sorry, we not centered, but even all the way up. So we want it to be even all the way up and straight. Then I'm going to put a clip on it, put a clip on both sides. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to top, I'm going to stitch across the top here. So I put it in, I don't know if you could see the other part, put it in, I've left three-eighths to half an inch up top 
I'm flipping it over and along the top of the seam here, I'm going to top stitch. And I'm actually going to do it at with a three and a half stitch length. So in there, just about an eighth of an inch away. Now we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we don't go too far out this way or too far out this way. We want to stay within this one inch connector width. So I'm going to put it in. Back stitch. I'm going to one more and I'm going to back stitch because we want it in there. Okay, so now I take it out and take those off. Trim my threads. I'm actually going to melt any that may be sticking out. And then just above, just above this line in the center, I'm going to put a dot. And right there is where I'm going to punch a hole and I'm going to put a rivet. So normally I would use my um, hole punch like this, but I don't have room on my table. So hopefully you're going to be able to see this if I move it up here. So on this hole, I've got my little Japanese hole punch. So on this mark that I have, I'm going to punch a hole. Hopefully it went all the way through. doesn't look like it. Try it again. And there, it went all the way through. So I'm going to take a rivet, going to put it in the hole. Put a cap on the back. If it pops, it's great. And then I'm going to press the rivet in place, just like that. Now I want to take my rectangle ring. Mine aren't um, welded, so I want to make sure I've got this part hidden. So put it on with that in the center, fold it over, and then push the top part through through the, the, the connector hole. Try to get it down and taut. So we've got these two pieces. This is the one we just pulled through. So we want it tight. We don't want it puckering. So that's, that's pretty good. So now we want to take the, uh, take this and on below, one second. And so now below the handle we're going to, or connector, we're going to do a little top stitching again, an eighth of an inch. And again, within that one inch, we don't want to go too far over one side or the other because it'll, it would look funny. So you just keep it in between there. I'm actually going to put it up to a five because these stitches are going to be seen. So we want them to look nice. So I'm going to start right about there and back stitch. Just slowly go over. Pull it out. Trim my threads. There we go. And now I'm going to put another mark with my silver marking pen. This time I'm actually going to measure because it is, we're, we are able to see it. So I want to get, I want to center it pretty well with the connector handle. And then I'm going to mark a mark, put a mark right below, right below that stitching line. And that's where we're going to punch a second hole and put a second rivet. This one's a little much for my little Japanese hole punch. So I'm just going to turn around and do it with my, my press. So I've got a hole here, hole right through. I'm going to put in a rivet. Pop on the backing. 
the back, the double second cap. Put it under my press and push it down. And there we go. We have one of four handle, uh, handle connectors installed. So go ahead and do the same thing to the other connectors and we'll be back. All right, so now all of the um, connector hardware has been installed. All the rivets are in and all stitched. Looks good from the back side. So now it's time to, I'm just gonna melt some threads. It's time to stitch the um, exteriors together. So I'm going to put the two exteriors face down. I'm going to match the long seam here and I'm gonna put some clips in it. I'm also gonna be putting some clips on the end, along the ed long edge. And across the top. Just with these connectors in there now, it wants to bubble. So then it, it makes your seam, can make your seam wonky. So I'm gonna stitch down the center seam, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I have it on a three and a half joining stitch. So I'm gonna back, I'm going all the way down this long edge. stitch at the end. Threads. Now one seam, one of the exterior center seams has been sewn. So I'm going to now open it up, take the, all of the clips off, open it up. I'm going to butterfly the seam, change it to a five stitch length because now I'm going to top stitch down one side and back up the other making sure that my hand underneath is going to be coming along making sure that I've got the seam butterflied and again going underneath making sure it's split in the center Turn it. I'm gonna actually clip it off, trim it off. I was going to keep it, but I pulled out too much. So now I'm just gonna go back up the other side, making sure that the seam is still split open. threads and there we go we have one center seam sewn I'm going to go ahead and add my can't see it add my label about four and a half four four and a half inches up and then I'll be back to do the rest of it all right I have my bag label on ready to move on to the next part and the next part is matching up the other side so again, I'm gonna match it up at the bottom and clip it to make sure it stays where I put it. And then match it up along the long edge that we're gonna sew on all the way up. Actually, I'm gonna start at the top because I want those to be even. I don't wanna to have to take anything off of the top. So I'll any extra excess I'll take off the bottom, not off the top. So go to pin that or clip that all the way down. So there is a little bit of excess. That'll be fine. And now I'm going to stitch again, three eighths of an inch um, seam allowance, and I'm using a joining stitch. So for me, that's three and a half. I'm going to go all the way down this seam. Trim it. 
trim your threads. And now, this is going to be fun. It's not impossible, but it's going to be fun. We're going to put it back up to a five stitch length. And I'm going to work to stitch down one side and back up the other. Again, butterflying the seams, so splitting them open. Just to help with this, I'm going to put one on this side for now until I get it into place. I'm going to have to sew it in a tube. So now we've got this tube. I'm going to have to stitch it in the tube. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Um, may not be able to see the whole thing, but hopefully you can see most of it. And I need to keep this part out of the way while I do this. And make sure that I'm butterflying the seam. did not cut my thread I just turned it and now I'm going to come back up the other side yes it's still butterfly making sure it's still butterfly so I'm stitching one eighth of an inch away from the seam on both sides I didn't say that before all right and trim the threads and now we are all done with that seam. On to the next section. All right, in this next section, we are gonna be sewing the bag base on exterior onto the main exterior. So I'm gonna start with my front. So there's my front, it has my logo on it. I'm going to put the base in upside down matching I have marked already my centers on all four sides so I'm going to match I'm going to match this center with the center seam so, so the center of the long edge with the center seam and I'm going to clip actually I'm going to clip it towards facing towards the base side the other way where is the base oh it's already there okay all right so we've got it clipped I'm going to put it down on the on my machine and I am going to stitch I'm going to stitch approximately half an inch I'm going to start at this corner where I've got that half inch corner there. I'm going to start at that line, stitch all the way across and stop at that line. And I'm doing, I think I said about a half inch seam allowance. So I put my needle down right on that mark. All right, and now I'm going to stitch all the way across. Trying to keep the other side out of the way. I'm just going over the center, I'm just back stitching a bit. And I'm stopping at that line. Next stitch. Don't 
gunk off my needle. I find Jacoville light and heavy leave a gunk, some gunk on my needle that I end up having to pull off. It's not overly sticky like um, tape would be. So anyways, now I'm going to take the other long side, match it up with this center mark. I'm going to match it up with the shorter side and clips facing the base. So match it up all the way across. And then go the other way. And do the same thing again. So starting at the one line for that corner, half inch corner that we made. So I'm going to half inch seam allowance starting at the one line. There we go. And then to the other one. Trying to keep the edges as even as possible. Oh, backing, back stitching over the center seam. And there we go. Trim our threads. And now we're going to match up the side seams exactly the same way as we did the long ones. We're going to start with the center. And with the side seams, I've remarked my centers because um, once we've sewn it together, the, the, the center may not be the center anymore, depending on our, how good we are with our, our seam allowances. So I'm going to pull this out. flatten it out so we can see this box in the corner and we're going to stitch again from this line to the other line and do the same for the other side let's try and see if I can keep it so you can see what's going on and keep the bag on my table Our base is now sewn on, so I'm going to go around. Actually, I'm going to pull it through and see what it looks like. Just check inside. So yeah, it looks okay from from the inside. I don't know if you can see in there. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to take some of this extra off. So I'm going to take some of this extra here. Trim. Trim these seams. All right, we've trimmed the bag base. Now it's time to set this aside and work on the lining.
All right, moving on to the lining, we're going to start with adding the zipper overlay and then the zippered pocket. So what I've done is I've taken the zipper overlay. This is done of vinyl, so it's a self-healing fabric. And I've marked the center on here. I've put wash away wonder tape on the back of this because when we have to cut through, it's easier to peel this away than it is the other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I've also marked how far down based on the pattern and I'm going to center it. So taking off the paper backing from the wash away wonder tape. Oops, not the whole piece, just the backing. <laughs> and I'm going to line up this mark, center mark, with that center mark. And, and the top of the zipper overlay, zipper trim, there. Just... it down a little bit. So now that it's on, we are going to just check the pattern, make sure I get it right. Yep, we're going to stitch around the outside edge of this. So I'm going to change to a, a decorative stitch length. So I'm going to a number five, stitch length of five. I'm going to start actually, going to start on the bottom. And I'm not going, to, I'm going to backstitch once. So I'm going forward, backstitch to lock it in. And then I'm going to keep going around the rest of it. Taking care around the corners to make it look nice because this will all be seen from the outside. So we want a really nice top stitch. trim these threads and now that I'm close to the end I'm going to go one stitch and back and that's it Trim this thread a little longer, pull on this one so it pops it to the back. Clip. And I'm going to singe this. So that it stays in place. Didn't back stitch quite enough. Should have gone one more stitch. Because it looks good on this side, but that could pull out. Thinking I'm going to put my needle down, go one, back, one, two, three, four, one, two, and up. There, it'll add a little bit more to the uh, look on the front. A couple extra stitches on the front, but at least it'll stay. So I'm going to Pull on it, see if I can pop it to the back. Doesn't look like it. Trim those off. Melt these threads. It's not too bad. You can see it there, but... Yeah. Alright. So the next step, we're going to... Fold this in half. I'm going to start cutting and then from the back I'm going to cut over to the edge and this is where we have to move the tape so it's easier with the wash away wonder tape because it comes apart a little easier so we have to pry the for me the waterproof canvas away and we're going to snip around all the way around I 
I could take it off, but it actually does help. The stickiness does help when we get the zipper in there, the zipper panel in there. There we go. All right, on to the next part. In this part, we're going to be um, making the zipper pocket, the, so the interior part. So we're gonna start with our zipper tape. I'm using zipper tape. You can use a regular zipper. Um, my instructions are gonna be for zipper tape. So anyways, in the pattern, we, so you would just make sure your zipper is cut to 11 inches. So in the pattern, it says put the zipper right side down. I don't have my pull on it, um, but if you uh, want your, if you have your pull on it and you want to make sure you um, finish with the zipper on the left side. So if you want it to close this way, make sure you have it the other way. But being that I'm using um just zipper tape it doesn't really matter and I don't have my pull on so put it right side down and then take your piece a zipper pocket a piece and put it down on top and then I'm going to pin this which is basically the same as putting your zipper panel a right side up and this right side up I don't have directional print well I guess it kind of is it doesn't really matter. It's going to be inside the zipper. Nobody's going to be able to see. It's at the top. Nobody's going to see this part anyway. So I'm going to just continue with it this way. I'm going to clip it all the way across. And I'm going to, with my three and a half stitch length, I'm going to, oops, put my presser foot. Yep, there it is. I'm going to stitch it across at an eighth of an inch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Trim my threads. Now I want to top stitch. So I'm going to top stitch on this side, but I want all of the, I want the zipper to end up lying flat. So I can't put the, the seam allowance going that way or it won't lie flat. So the seam allowance has to go this way. So when I'm putting it face down, I'll keep it flat, then pull the uh, lining fabric to this side and finger press. So make sure that all of the seam allowance is going towards the lining side, not the zipper side, and that will keep it nice and flat. Now we're going to do a an eighth of an inch top stitch to hold this in place. So I'm just going to change it to a five, not that it really matters inside the pocket. Mr. Max is barking. All right, and then trim your threads. And now we're gonna do that again with the zipper pocket piece B. So I'm gonna put the zipper pocket piece B right side up, or if you're following the instructions, right side down. I'm, it's going to end up being the same thing. I just like to see the right side. So then I'm going to clip across all the way lining up the edge and I should line up the sides. So this one's over a little much, but this one's in line. So at least one of the sides is lined up. So I'm going to clip it back to a joining stitch length. And I'm going to stitch it across at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay. 
I would recommend if you're using actual an actual zipper to follow the instructions. If you're using zipper tape and you haven't put your pull on yet, it doesn't really matter whether you do it the way I'm doing it or whether you, you, do, you follow the instructions. But if you're using an actual zipper, zipper, then follow the instructions in the pattern. All right, trim that back up to a top stitch. And again, we want this zipper to lie flat. So we're gonna zipper flat, fold this piece that way, and then finger press. So I'm just reaching under to make sure that the zipper, it, the zipper tape is going the correct way and is lying flat. Such a small little seam, it's hard to get it going all in the same direction. It wants to curl back. All right, there we go. I'm gonna top stitch that. Again, with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I've already put it up to a top stitching length of five. Alright, there we go. Trim the threads. So now we're going to um, put the lining of the zipper pocket. I'm going to put some tape on both sides. We're going to put it into the lining of the bag. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape way down at the bottom here and put some double-sided tape way at the top up here. And then I'm going to take my I'm going to have to flip it around and I'm going to take off this bottom piece of tape. Now the paper off this bottom piece of tape. Oh, almost forgot. Before I do that, I need to put on my zipper pull or slider. So I'm going to put on my slider, pop it in one side, pop it in the other, try and get them even. So there's about even. Pop it on. Pull and look for any bubbles. There's no, they're even on either side. So I've got it pretty centered. So I'm going to put that in the center. And now I'm going to take the exterior piece and try and center it on this keeping the slider in the center, all these centers. So put it down and then I can readjust if I need to. All right, I can't really see. All right, so no, not quite. So I'm gonna, it's a little too far away on this side. So I'm gonna pop this up. There, still a little too far on this side, uneven. There, that's not too bad. And now I'm going to take the backing off of this tape and try and set this one down as evenly as I can on the other side. There we go. All right, so now we need to stitch the zipper in place. So I'm going to put it under. So I've, I've set my zipper slider to be in the center. It's closed on both sides. I've got this method from Tori at Seems Legit. Um, she has a YouTube channel and has a lot of great videos. So go check that out. So I'm going to start with the pull in the center there. I'm going to start just down from it about there and I am going to and backstitch and keep going down this way away from the zipper slider and then turn keeping this closed because it 
it closes this way. So if we go and do this per first, then we can slip it back that way and we can stitch around the whole zipper without it being open and getting all wonky. So we're coming up to the zipper slider. So we're going to have to move it out of the way. So now we'll move it this way and it's closed. It's out of the way and we can keep going around the zipper. and our zipper is in we need to now bring this up here we're going to bring this up and i'm going to clip it along the top flatten it down now this is a birth bag so i'm going to be pulling it through the bottom and uh I need a way, a nice way to close up the bottom. So I'm going to leave this zipper pocket open. So I folded it over and clipped it at the top. And now I'm just cutting the bottom of this open so that after I've birthed the bag through the bottom, I can close the bottom through the zipper pocket. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm actually gonna add a couple more clips. going to flip it over and grab my threads three and a half stitch length I'm going to fold this end up I find folding it up helps keep it keep the bottom seam nice I'll show you so if I fold it up like this then when I pop it through it'll have a nice finish on it and it will help me when I go to close up the pocket later so I'm going just over a quarter of an inch. I'm going to go all the way up, peeling this tape aside. All the way up to the top. Turn. Grab the top. And now I'm going back down the other side again, pulling this tape back and exposing the teeth. And the closer I get to the bottom, I'm going to put this up and I'm going to fold it along. Uh, I didn't cut very well, but fold it along like that. not going to matter it's going to get closed up after so and there we go from the threads and now I can do this and pop it out like that and it forces the edge to turn and it helps to create a nice smooth seam when we go to stitch the um the bag through you can take this to an iron if you're using cotton i'm just going to finger press it the best i can sometimes rubbing on the side of the table helps depending on your table all right and there we go zipper pocket is in i am going to leave this open because like i said we're going to be turning through it and it's time to move on to the next part
Right in this next section, we are going to be working on the slip pocket. So I have two pieces, cut different sizes for a reason, cut different width or heights for a reason. So I'm going to take the one side and match it up along the long side and clip it. I'm going to make sure I'm on a three and a half stitch length. I am, and I am going to stitch it at a quarter inch seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. So starting on this side, back stitch. All the way along. Don't worry if one, one piece is wider than the other. We can trim that down later. As long as they're wide enough to cover the body piece. So all the way over. Back stitch. Now we're going to line up the other side. And we're going to end up with a little a tube that's lopsided. So one side's going to be straight and one's going to have a little puff to it. That is perfectly fine. That is actually what we're looking for. And now we're going to do the same, sewing back the other direction. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. And this side had more um, overhang on this on the vinyl part. So I made the overhang the same on both sides. So it's not overhanging on one and overhanging on then this one. This one matched up evenly. I'm going to keep it even. So we just trim off the excess on the one side. Otherwise, it can get wonky. And now we're going to pull this through. So putting my hand in all the way through, grabbing at one end, and then pulling it in towards the inside. And then all the way through. All right. So one of these, so which way does it go? So this is the bottom. So I'm going to finger press this. This is going to be the side that matches up completely. So make this match up nicely. I'm going to take some clips. If you're using all cotton, you can take it to the iron. Um, I've got some vinyl. I probably could take it to an iron, but uh, it's okay. I'll finger press it. So I'm going to keep going all along this edge. I want that matched up. there and now when we flatten it out we want we want this the um seam allowance to go up so i don't know if you can see this there's extra here this folds over i want this seam allowance to go up into the uh, contrast so i'm pushing it putting my hand in and pushing it up again and now i'm finger pressing to make it an nice seam and I'm going to clip a bit so you can put your hand in the other way make sure it's going up the excess is the seam allowance is going up 
finger press and clip. Alright. Right, so now we are going to top stitch this pocket. We're going to do two once or twice based on personal preference. Okay. So I'm going to do it once. Um, an eighth of an inch away from the edge, the outer edge. And I'm putting it on a size of uh, number five stitch line. Trying to keep the seam allowance. These are all getting caught on my table and it's pulling it out of whack. All right, try and keep it so that it stitches the uh, seam allowance, or the seam allowance that we pushed up that way. I want to keep it going that way. That's one row of stitching. Now I'm going to come another one at a quarter of an inch. So edge of my presser foot along the edge of the fabric. Some of my stitches went a little wonky right in there, so I'm going to <clears throat> pop them out and restitch them. Right. Right. Cotton, I'm just going to try and move the threads. Close up those holes. All right, so I'm going to start a few stitches before I went off the rails. this pocket to the other um, lining panel. So I'm just going to find the center, snip, put a little snip in it so I find my centers. I probably don't need it across the bottom but it can't hurt as long as you keep it within the seam allowance. So there's my center. I'm going to get my ruler and I need four and a half inches down. I'm going to, so four and a half, and I have lined up the seven. So with my panel, trim off the, just gonna trim off the excess here. So. Find the center. Threads that need to be melted. All right, center. So I'm going to line up. Now I've lost it again. Need this one. Use my charcoal pen. There, right in there. Is the center. So I'm going to line up the center of this panel. Can you see that with the seven 
on this one. There we go. And I'm going to slowly move it over under my needle. And I'm going to stitch across the bottom. So I'm going to try and keep this even and, and stitch all along this seam. Eighth of an inch all across the bottom. Trim my threads. I'm going to flip it over and baste up the edges. Right. Trim off the excess. Now, I'm going to mark for the pockets. So, using the center, which I'm going to try and mark again, using the center mark, I'm going to measure out two inches on one side. And I'm going to go out, make that centered centered. Where did it go? Okay. Two inches on the other side. And I'm going to start at the bottom and stitch up, turn around and come back down for both of these. Um, the pattern has an extra seam right in the center, but I found, I can't show you, but I found that my foam sits nicely in there, or you could use it as uh, two pen slots. After I've stitched it, I'm just going to come up to here and turn around because I'm going to, and turn around and come back, I'm going to put rivets, one on either side. So, again, still with the decorative number five stitch length, I'm going to yeah, make sure I back stitch. And there we go. Lining is now done. That's air race pen, so it should come out over time. Right, on to the next section. And that will be sewing the lining. So we need to place the lining pieces right sides together. I'm going to try my best to match things up. And as I mentioned at the beginning, your sides may be more rounded than this. Um, I had cut mine out before the pattern pieces got changed. So um, I'm going to try and match it up the best I can. So yeah, don't be concerned if yours looks a little different than mine. That would be the reason. Now we're going to stitch these sides closed at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And up the other side. Actually, I'm going to go down this side. Sorry.
And the reason I'm going from the top down is I want to keep these edges the same. So if it does happen to um, stretch a bit, the top level, top, top layer, then I can take it off the bottom. I can hide it easier in the bottom. But the top needs to be even so it will match up with the exterior. to the next step. All right, it's time to add the zipper panel lining. Um, right now, everything is lined up nicely and we want it to be lined up nicely when we put it all together. Like we want everything yeah, to finish the right ends and meet in the middle. So one of the things I, um, gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some air erase pen and I'm going to draw across the zipper. So we take this apart to add it to the bag. And when we put the zipper sliders back on, we want to make sure that not only is this match, these match, but this is just extra to help make sure it's all matched up. So just putting them on, it'll go away. It's not there permanently. But now I can take apart the zipper like this and we're going to add it, start adding it to the bag. So other thing I want to do before I start adding it to the bag is trim a little bit of this down. So I'm going to leave some at the bottom so it makes, um, makes boxing the corners a little easier. But I'm going to take some off of the sides and I'm also going to leave some at the top. We'll see how that goes. But, so yeah, take it off at the bottom. Or leave some at the bottom. And leave some at the top. Now I'm going to start adding the zipper panel. I want to add, so I'm going to put right side up one of the linings and I'm going to center it. So I want, yeah, right side up and I'm going to clip this on just do some clipping and now I'm going to um, baste this in place. So I'm going to keep the I'm going to put it up to a five because basting is usually a longer stitch. And I'm going to baste it an eighth of an inch all the way across just the zipper, um, zipper panel closure. So I already had my centers marked on my, on my lining pieces and I've had, have my centers marked on my zipper panel. That's why it was pretty quick for me to just put those together and now start st stitching across. All right, one basted in place. the other one in place. Again, we're going to center it with the right side up. And clip it. Baste again on this side. Keeping the other lining panel away, out of the way. Don't get it caught in your stitches. And your nuts. On to the next step.
Okay, time to add the lining to the exterior. So we need to have them right sides together. And right now we can't do that. So I'm going to flip the lining. It's easier to put the lining inside of the exterior because lining is usually smaller than the exterior. So I'm going to turn this one right side out, leave that one wrong side out, and then I'm going to slip the two together. Before I do that, I'm going to take some clips and clip this, these, um, the zipper tape out of the way. We really don't need it in getting caught in there. Both sides. This way it shouldn't get caught in our seams. Shouldn't get caught. So I usually like to have my zipper pocket to the back of the bag. So I'm going to stick it, the front is the one with my bag label on it. So I'm going to stick this in like that. So the zipper is at the back of the bag. Pull the lining in as far as I can get it. Alright, and then I'm going to start clipping. So I'm going to match up the center, center marks. Oop. Match the center marks up and clip. Go over to the rounded corner. Just go on this side for a minute and match up the center. And I'm going to be stitching from the lining side because it's easier just to put this down like that. And now to the sides. Wow. All right, so I had to pull the lining down further so that I could meet them down here. Meet these side seams, so side seams. And I'm gonna put two clips in here, one on either side, because I want those. And then up here, up, this, up to the curve. Oops, pointing inwards. So again, yours with the new pattern pieces is more rounded in here. It's supposed to make it a little easier to sew. I'll find out. Right. Clip. And now over to the other side, again, have to push the seam or the bottom right down in so I can match up the seams. And I'm going to stitch the two together. So I'm going to start, make sure that I'm on a three and a half stitch length, joining stitch. I'm going to get this under my machine. I'm going to stitch it at three eighths of an inch and starting about the middle. I'm going to start around the middle of the bag. So three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch. Just take it slow around, moving the bag out of the way.
right, there we go. Now we're gonna trim down the seams and I'll turn it inside out and then I'll top stitch it. So I'm going to take my pinking shears on the corner and take those off. It's a little tough where the zipper, um, zipper panel closure is, but take off this with this, with the pinking shears. I'm going to into these corners. I'm going to snip into the corners up to, but not snipping my um, stitches, which is what we do when we put on a zipper, like cut the opening for the zipper panel. So we're doing the same kind of thing. We're gonna cut up to, but not into it. I'm going to also trim this excess down a bit so we can have a nice corner down here. Let's turn it around so I can get at it. See, I'm gonna trim this down a bit. Oops. There we go. Do the same on the other side. So again, into the corner, up to, but not into the stitches. And then take off the excess. piece okay I'm going to reposition over at the table and then we'll turn this thing right side out all right back at the table we've stitched around we've trimmed off um the excess. Haven't trimmed it off here, thinking I'm going to leave it. Oh, maybe I'll trim it down a bit. So I'm going to trim across the top as well. I don't need to use the pinking shears because it's a straight edge. So there's one side. side. I'm going to reach in and pull out the lining of the bag. It's all open. Remember, we didn't close up the bottom. So put my hand in, push it into my hand and start pulling it through. corners. I'm just going to use the rounded end of my pen to kind of push those corners out. And then the other side. Give it a little, little tug on the zipper panel. Don't want to pull too much because you don't want to pull your stitches. Push out the corners. And again, around the pocket. There we go. Round those corners. that work 
has a little bit more of a, a tip is a star i don't remember what it's called screwdriver it's a little thicker one so don't push too hard or you'll go through the seam but it helps push out corners there we go And now we're going to tuck the lining inside the bag. zipper pocket for a minute while I push the sides. Okay. So the side seams are a little thick, so I'm going to compress them a bit. I have these, um, I think they're like glass breaking pliers. I actually use them for crimping um, key fobs, um, what are they, strap ends, that kind of thing. They're flat and these actually have um, like a rubber coating over them. So it shouldn't wreck anything. So I'm going to put it, this, this seam is very thick. So I'm going to put this over and I'm going to squish it down and try and make it easier to top stitch over. And do the same on the other side. So tucking the lining. So I'm tucking, so there's the lining. I'm tucking it back in. Grab the pliers and then squeeze. And that'll help compress the seam. So we'll be it'll be easier to go over. Right. Going to put in a couple clips. I think that's pretty good all the way around. I need to, this corner needs to be poked out a little more. So I'm going to reach in with my screwdriver and get in there and push a little bit. There we go. It's a little more rounded. And on this side, going to go and top stitch. Now I think I'm going to top stitch at a quarter of an inch. It's sometimes difficult when you have zipper panels to get them even, get the stitches even on both sides. I found that I can get it nice on the outside but it wants to miss the inside. So if I do use a quarter of an inch for the seam allowance for top stitching, I'm more likely to catch both layers. So I'm going to start I'm going to actually turn it right inside out so I can do it with the table on my machine. I'm going to start in top stitch. I'm going to start in the middle of the back and go all the way around and stop back here. As I said, a quarter of an inch seam allowance should hopefully catch everything. So I'll move you back over to the machine and we'll get top stitching. All right, let's start top stitching. So I'm going to make sure I have a top stitch length of 
uh, stitch length of five. And I, as I said, I'm going to start in the middle and a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to put my needle down in the middle seam. It's easier to hide your stitches in the seam. some threads and it's all top stitched I'm going to move you around to the table view and we'll put it back right side out and get the zipper pocket get the bottom through the zipper pocket so we can sew it up back to the table view let's put this thing back right side out I'm just going to take the clips off because we don't need to worry about those at the moment. Right, lining back in. And there we go. Looks looking good. So what I want to do now is the zipper pocket in here, open the zipper pocket, pull out the lining for the zipper pocket, and now I'm going to reach my hand in, looking for the bottom of the bag, and I'm going to pull the bottoms through the zipper pocket. There we go. We got the bottom of the zipper or bottom of the bag through the zipper pocket. I'm going to match up the centers and clip all the way over. Now I'm going to stitch this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance from one side to the other. Then I'm going to box the corners. I'll shove it back in the bag and then I'll close the zipper pocket. So I'm going to move you back over to the machine and we'll um, go ahead with that. All right, we're back at the machine. So like I said, I'm going to Stitch across the bottom with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Change it to three and a half stitch length. Trim my threads. Now I'm going to take the corners. I need to box the corners. So I'm going to spread it out 
and I'm going to nest the seams. Instead of butterflying them, which is what I would do on the outside, I'm just going to nest them so you can see the uh, seam allowance is going one way on the top and one way on the bottom. So just nest them together and clip. It still makes them look nice on the inside, but it's not as fin uh, finicky. Um, it's a little easier to do. So I'll do that. I'll get them both ready. And we want to make sure that we're nesting them the same way. So the seam allowance on that one, this one went that way. So we want to make sure it's still going that way on here, on this side. So it's not, so it's not like twisted part way. So we're going to go that way, nest it again, and then I'll clip it. Actually clip it that way. And now I'm going to sew the boxed corners. So I'm going to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance as well on these corners. Got my threads. I'm going to make sure I back stitch at the start. And I want to make sure that my seam allowance on the bottom is still going in the right direction. So it needs to get caught there. I'm going to back stitch over the reinforce of the center and then back stitch at the end and do the same for the other side. Also going to cut back some of this, this excess seam. We don't need all the bulk, so I'm gonna trim that back. There we go. I'm going to push the lining back into the bag. Now I'm going to take the um, pocket and actually I'm going to change my thread first so that it's using the orange thread, it color matches a little better, and then I'll come back and sew this up. All right, thread is changed. I'm going to stitch up this pocket. So I'm gonna leave it at a three and a half stitch length. It doesn't really matter. I've done it both ways. It's just that's what it's on right now, so that's what I'm going to leave it at. There we go. And tuck the zipper pocket back in. Close it up. We're almost there. Now I just need to put the zipper uh, pulls on. All right, so I'm gonna put the zipper pulls back on and I need to put the straps on. And I'm gonna move you over to the table for that. All right, time to put the zipper sliders on. Now I want to keep the ends of my zippers, my en the ends of my zippers were quite flat, like they matched up pretty well before I put the zipper panel on. I need to make sure I match the ends of the zipper panel up. And I also had those marks that I put on the back of my zipper. 
So I want to try and make sure I've got all of those lined up when I put my slider on. So I'm going to hold them fairly close to even, then pop the slider on one side, put it in and pop it on the other. Make sure that they look at the top, like along here, make sure they look about even, and then pull the slider in. Gonna pull it up a bit and see. Yeah, the lines, I don't know if you can see that, but the lines look like they're matching. The zipper panel is pretty close. Could be off, it looks like it's off just a bit. So I'm going to pull this back off and adjust it a bit. So I want, because it's the panels that matter the most, we can trim off excess and the mark on the back of the zipper will disappear. So I want to make sure that I've got those pretty much even. Put the pull on, see if I can do it backwards. Put this one on. They're not going to be even because they weren't even at the panel. And then pull. That's a lot better. So that the zipper panel is pretty even at the top. So I'm going to leave it at that. So there's one on one side. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Trying to match up the panels. I'm going to put the slider on one side, pop it on the other, and slide it up to meet. Looks pretty good. There's no bubbles. It's all looking good. All right, I missed recording the addition of the zipper ends, but it's really not that difficult. You just fold the zipper tape in on itself, stick it, put some glue in the zipper end, stick the zipper tape, everything in, and then there's a little screw that you screw in on the back. So there's one on each end of this bag. So I've, I missed in recording installation of both. Um, yeah. So they just get tucked in the sides. All right, moving on to installing the um, handles. So pick one of the handles. I'm going to start on the back side. Which strap do I want on the front? Which do I want on the back? I think I'll do this on the front. This one will go on the back. So basically, we've got the rectangle rings. It's going to go up one side and then down on the other. I'm going to clip it for now, but then I'm going to get and want to measure. So I have my ruler. Oh, I need to grab my lighter melt any threads. All right, so I'm going to measure, I want it to be about an inch and a quarter out. So that's about there. I'm going to clip it right on the very ends and then bring the other one up this way because we don't want it twisted. So we want to make sure it's not twisted. Go up underneath on this one and fold it over. And again, I'm going to measure to see if it's, make sure it's about an inch and a quarter. It seems to sit nicely there. Put these clips off the end of it. Because what I want to do now is measure down. Let's see if I can do this without. I'm going to measure down about half an inch. Center, these are one inch wide straps. So I'm going to center the ruler about half an inch to five eighths of an inch down. I'm going to, using the half inch mark in the center, center the mark. I have to bring this around so I can actually see it. 
yeah, so right about there. So then I put a dot. I'm using a silver marking pen I got from uh, Lauren Marmino at uh, So Whatever. So I'm going to do the same for both both straps. So about five eighths, center it, and then mark right in the center of the strap. So there. So I've got those two marked. I am going to bring over my hole punch. I've got two rivet presses. I keep one for um, punching holes and the other one for riveting. So I'm going to slip this underneath, trying to keep it center, centered. Punch the hole. Oh, I need my, I'm going to, this is where I'm going to use some large rivets. And so grab out a couple large rivets because there's quite a number of layers here. Pop it through and pop the cap on the back. I'm going to do it to the other side. Turn this a bit. Again, I put the post, I usually put the post through the front, doesn't matter, people do it either way, um, and then pop it on the back, and then I'll swap it out, and I can take the clips off now, they're in place. under, seat it in that, and I gotta stand up for this, and then push it down. Other handle, and I try, mine seems to be the nicest, like sometimes it gets little compression marks in there, this top piece looks better, so I try and keep the exterior, whatever's gonna be seen the most, it doesn't really matter on this one, using the top this way, everything looks nice, and they're all in there. I'll go ahead and do the front ones and then we'll move on to the very, very last step. All right, I've got both the front, oops, go out. I have both the front handle and the back handle attached. The very last step for me on this bag is to uh, sew up the crossbody strap. The pattern will come, as, as of this recording, the pattern will come with an option. The option is handles. You can do four strap connector, four hidden connectors and handles, or just two hidden connectors, one on either side, and then probably with a D-ring or an O-ring, and then you can hook your crossbody strap to that. I've decided I'm doing a crossbody strap and I wanted the handles. So I've got the handles, I'm going to make the crossbody strap and then I'm going to hook it onto opposing um, strap connectors. So the very last step for me is making the crossbody strap. So we've got two definitely <laughs> very different sizes. So we've got a really long main piece and then a very short contrast piece. So I need to be, and I'm, we're going to stitch them. I've got to put them face right sides together. I even wrote it there because I forgot the very first one I did. So I put, the, put them right sides together and I'm going to stitch along that line because we're going to Put, create an angle and it will create a, a nice angle in the strap and it will reduce the bulk. So if you sew, if I were to sew it just on the end to end on the seam, it gets quite bulky. So this way it's going to reduce the bulk, especially when you're sewing with faux leather. So I'm going to, it's on a three and a half stitch length. So I'm going to do corner to corner and Back stitch and follow the line all the way across. All right. This 
off. I'm going to trim it down to approximately a quarter of an inch. There we go. Hold on to those because I might be able to use them for something else. I'm going to butterfly the seams on this to help keep the seams open. So press it down a bit while I move my stitch length up to five. So now I'm just going to do this off camera because I don't, then I don't have to move everything around. I'm going to draw a line down the center. I'm going to um, put some double-sided tape along that line, and then I'm going to fold into the center, leaving a gap approximately that much so that I can fold it over like this and they stay even. So I'm going to do that off camera. When I come back, we'll be ready to stitch the uh, crossbody strap. All right, so here is the crossbody strap. So I, as I was saying, I put a line, I actually put um, double-sided tape but I put it in from the from the side so I don't end up stitching it because I my machine like I said doesn't like double-sided tape so then I folded it into the center leaving a bit of space so that when you fold it over on each other again it it has the space for it to lie pretty flat so I'm going to go and st stitch with my number five stitch length I'm going to stitch down one side, across the bottom, up the other, and across, and then um, we'll come back and put the hardware on. Trim off the tails. Uh, melt any ends. And now we're going to take some scissors and trim up the ends to make them nice and flush. And since there's a fabric backing on the faux leather, I'm going to burn away any fluffies. We'll do the same on this end. So trim it down and then clean it up. All right, and there we have that. We get the hardware. So I'm going to use one strap one slider so I'm using one inch hardware figure out what's the front all right so this is the I'm going to put up one side and down the other 
I'm going to bring it over like that. Where'd my ruler go? Gonna measure it. This one, yeah, about an inch and a quarter. And I'm just gonna go up from this end this time, about half an inch from the end and or maybe five eighths. Let's go up five eighths. So I'm thinking of putting um, strap end on it. So I'm going to mark a little dot right there. I'm going to punch a hole. Yep, that looks okay. Punch a hole. Clip it so I can grab some rivets. Rivet on. I'm going to just turn around, set the rivet, and I'll be right back. I've set the I've set the rivet so now I'm going to go right to the other end flatten it out make sure it's not twisted add the swivel hook hanging down so you want it on the outside then I'm going to come up one side keep this from getting twisted up one side Down the other. Still wants to twist. For now, just to make sure everything stays untwisted. There we go. So I'm going to flatten it out and we want to put the other hook we want it on this side so I'll put this on this end hold it over I'm just gonna clip it for a sec check it's about yep it's about an inch and a half go up about five eighths put a dot in the center take my hole punch It's Punch the hole. Rivet. End cap. And now I'm going to go set this rivet. And there we have our cross body strap. So on the bag, I'm going to put, I haven't decided, I think I'm going to put some strap ends. Not sure yet. I'll figure that out later. So I'm going to hook on one side and then keep it straight, go across and hook it on the other side. And there we go. We have a cross body strap. body strap attached to the bag and there we go you can either carry it with the crossbody or you can carry it with the handles and there you go the driftwood handbag is all done